Um, so I hope you really enjoyed the investigation yesterday. Now I finished by posing this question and I gave you the, uh, the hand span, the cubit and the head circumference of me and my daughters, Lily and Catherine. Now just to reveal, the person who had a cubit of 25 centimetres was, uh, was Lily, the young, the five-year-old. Uh, it was the head circumference of 53 centimetres, that was Catherine, and it was actually me that had the hand span of 19 centimetres. Um, but one thing that I've always found really surprising is exactly how big a head circumference is compared to, say, a cubit. Now, have a look at this. It's this kind of same idea, and I think this is quite an interesting one. I want you to look at this glass. And I want you to compare how long do you think this length, like once around the top of the glass is, compared to the height of the glass. So tell the screen, which one do you think will be longer? Will it be about the same? By how much? And then let's have a look. So I'm going to get this piece of string and let's see like around the glass. Um, so I'm going to put it right around like that. and. Oh, and hopefully it won't fall off too much. There we go. And so that is this long. So let me just cut that off. And don't worry, this is not a magic trick. Um, and then compare it to the height of the glass. And look at how much longer it is. I think that's amazing. Anyway, today um, we're going deeper in the different kinds of measurements. So in the main part of yesterday's lesson in the video, we came up with, this, uh, with our own measuring system using body parts like people used to have to do. Um, and we had to think about why is our metric system that we have actually really good? Why is it a useful system? And we talked about the accuracy that we can have when we're measuring with these different units, these uh, millimetres and centimetres and metres and kilometres. And also it's easier to kind of picture measures. You know, so if I'm imagining a long distance, it's easier to be able to describe it in a longer measuring stick like a kilometre uh, or equally smaller measures. I can visualise it better. And also we thought about the, the ease of actually converting between the measures. So converting between miles and yards can involve complex calculation, but kilometres to metres and vice versa, much easier. Well, we're going to get right in today to looking at different measures and different measurement systems and conversions between different systems. Um, and we'll see some of the common threads in all of the calculations that we end up doing. And hopefully it'll deepen your understanding of more difficult conversions as well. Um, so um, let's say we've got this giraffe, which we talked about yesterday. A giraffe is 4.6 metres tall. And we're trying to work out how many centimetres tall is the giraffe. Now, one of the key ideas to get across that hopefully yesterday's investigation will help with is I've got to think, well, centimetres are smaller. So will it be more or less centimetres than 4.6? And when I'm measuring the same thing, because centimetres are smaller, it will be more. Much like you'll have experienced yesterday when you've got smaller measures, you need more of them to measure the same thing. And then I, I just need to think, well, how many centimetres in a metre is 100 and do the multiplication. So it would be 460 centimetres, that giraffe. Just the same, a football crossbar is 732 centimetres long. How long in metres? Well, here, if I measure it in these tiny units of centimetres, it's a whole 732 in there. Um, will it be more or less metres? We have this thing that sounds a bit confusing because metres are bigger and that means there's less. Bigger means less because each one metre is more than one centimetre. So, so we end up with 7.32 metres as being the same length. Now, have a look at these examples here and see if you can explain the mistake. So the uh, questions are in black and the answers that have been given, uh, the blue answers, are the mistakes. Pause the video, what mistakes have been made in each example? Okay, well, let's have a look. Well. 75 millimetres. Well, millimetres are smaller and centimetres are bigger. So actually there won't be as many centimetres as millimetres. Rather than multiplying by 10 here, I'd actually need to divide by 10 to get 7.5 centimetres, the same as 75 millimetres. Here, 84 centimetres, how many metres? Well, actually, if 100 centimetres is the same as a metre, 84 centimetres must be less than one metre, 0 0.84 metres. And here, 2.6 metres. I often see this little mistake. How many centimetres? Well, we've multiplied the 2 by 100. It's just that the 6 hasn't moved as well. It would actually be, uh, the 6 needs to move two columns as well. It would be 260 centimetres. 
Now, I want you to have a go at these three questions here and rank them by difficulty. So again, you might know the answers to all of them. You might be able to just answer some and you can explain, well, what makes the others harder? Um, but I want you to say, which questions do you find easier and which harder and why? Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, well, let's have a look at some of the answers. So, well, four kilometers, well, that's 4,000 meters. So there, I just need to know whether well, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So do the, that multiplication there. Here, um, millimetres and centimetres, well there's 10 centimetres in a millimetre, so in a sense that might be easier than this example here. It's just that here I'm dividing because um, 4 millimetres, well millimetres are smaller and centimetres are larger, it will be less than 1 centimetre, 0.4 centimetres. Now, when we're converting between minutes and seconds, we no longer have this kind of 10, 100,000 multiplication available to us, because how many seconds in a minute? There's 60, so this time I've got to do four times 60, 240 seconds when I do that conversion there. So perhaps that might create some extra difficulty as well. Now, Here's a picture that just tries to explain that last question. So it's hard imagining a length of time because of course I don't see it, but I'm making this line represent this four minutes. And one way I can describe that, of course, is it's one, two, three, four minutes. And the other way I could, I could measure that is just in seconds. So instead the chunks are chunks of 60 seconds. And we can see that the line is the same length, it's the same amount of time. It's just I could measure it in minutes or in seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds here. So this is a, a, a time gap of 60 seconds. So of course, four minutes, 240 seconds. Now, in a similar way, well, I could describe this length of time represented by this purple line as one day or 24 hours. And it's the same length of time. It's just I can describe it in these different ways. So again, just in the same way, well, two days, um, if this, this purple line represents two days, then it's two lots of 24 hours, it's 48 hours. And each time I have another day, of course I have another 24 hours. So, have a look at these questions. Now, when we come to convert between um, seconds and minutes and hours and days, we're actually just doing the same thing as we are with the metric system, of course. It, it's just the calculation gets a little bit more difficult in some of the conversions. But again, I still need to think the same kind of underlying questions. Is it going to be more or less of the unit? So when I'm converting from minutes to seconds, um, seconds are a shorter period of time. So does that mean I'll have more seconds than 30 or will it be less for that same period of time? And then again, I need to think, well, how many in, so how many seconds are there in 30 minutes? So how many seconds for one minute? I'd need to think as well when it, it'll help me doing that calculation. So a very similar thought process. It's just the calculation might get slightly more challenging and see if you can have a go at them. Um, so pause the video and have a go. Okay, let's have a look. Well, 30 minutes, how many seconds? Well, it'll be more seconds because seconds are shorter. And then the conversion, well, 60 seconds in a minute. So 30 minutes, 30 times 60, 1,800 seconds. Now, 30 minutes, how many hours? Again, well, hours are a larger unit, so they'll not be as many as 30. And the conversion, again, minutes to hours is 60. So actually, it'll be half an hour, 30 minutes. And we might just naturally know that anyway. Um, and then 20 days, how many hours? Well, it'll be more hours, of course, because hours are a shorter length of time than a day. Um, and the conversion this time is 24, 24 hours in a day, 20 times 24, 480. Now, we've just been looking at converting between time and different units of time. And this was a picture we looked at before. And um, you can see that one minute represents 60 seconds. And the thing that's helpful here is that, that each minute can be converted into a whole number amount of seconds. Now, when we're converting between miles and kilometers, again, let's think about this green distance. And let's say this green distance can be described with these two different measures, either miles or kilometres. Now, miles are slightly longer than kilometres. So if I measure this green line, um, five miles um, is the same length as the green line, line but so is eight kilometres. Five miles and eight kilometres are almost exactly the same. Um, now, because um, this line is more kilometres, that can only be because the kilometres are shorter. 
So there's more of them that fill that same space. And and again, we, we measure longer distances in miles and kilometres. They're kind of a similar-ish measure. So five miles is the same as eight kilometres. Now, let's say I was, I was measuring the distance from where I live to Manchester. Um, and it has a straight line. It, it, it's about 35 miles. Now, I know five miles equals eight kilometres. So if I was trying to work out how many kilometres that is, I guess I would need to think, well, how many sets of five miles is this? How many lots of five miles in here? Well, it's 35 miles in total. So I can't just multiply up by 35. I've got to think, right, well, there, there must be five times seven is 35. It's seven lots of five miles. So to work out how many kilometres, well, it'll be seven lots of eight kilometres. It is about 56 kilometres. Now that should help again when we do these questions converting between miles and kilometres and seeing what's the same and what's different about doing conversions like that as opposed to converting between time or our metric system. So today's task, click on the blue link underneath this video. Um, task A is all about converting just between metric units. So if you think that's what you want to focus on and that would be a great challenge for you, then do, do task A. Um, so here we've got which answer, which of those um, three answers is the correct one? Can you explain the mistakes for the others? Um, similarly here, which is the right answer, explain the mistakes. Um, then order these lengths from the shortest to the longest. Um, and how do you know? Uh, and again here, explain the mistakes that have been made there. Now, task B is different in that it's converting between different kinds of measurements, so not just metric units. So we've got the same explain the mistakes questions to start with, and then we've got conversion between kilometres and miles, and also between different times. Um, answers are at the bottom. Of course, I'll be back again tomorrow.